place where I could lay my head. Hey, mister, can you tell me where a man might find a bed? He just grinned and shook my hand. No, it's all he said. Take a load off, Danny. Take a load for free. Take a load off, Danny. Hi, welcome to Musicians on the Record. This is the show where we bring you the musician story. I'm David Ward, and uh, every so often we get the special treat of really shining a light on a music organization also that is doing great works in the world. And I just, uh, if you haven't seen the video that we're going to go over and talk about, you got to see it. It's it's Robbie Robertson and Ringo doing The Wait by the band. It's awesome. We are talking with co-founder and producer of Playing for Change today. Mark Johnson is with us. Welcome, Mark. Hello. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. And I was just, you know, blown away. Something, you know, in my YouTube feed came across and uh, I see Robbie Robertson play and it's the weight, a, a favorite song, you know, love it. And then I see Ringo and like, what is this? And then I do a deep dive and I, I realize, oh, this is an organization called Playing for Change. And folks can take a look at playingforchange.com and playingforchange.org. Uh, to learn all about it and how to get involved. To, let's want to talk about the organization, but I also let's start with the the song, Mark, and how, the story behind the song in the video, please. Right. Well, um, so playing for change, you know, we, we travel around the world with a mobile recording studio and cameras. It's a small crew. And, you know, we've traveled <clears throat> so far to about 60 different countries around the world recording and filming musicians uh, and adding them to the Playing for Change songs around the world. So uh, I've known Sebastian Robertson, who's Robbie Robertson's son, for about 20 years. And he's a great friend and a producer. And he had come to visit me at the studio when we were finishing a version of All Along the Watchtower that we took around the world. Um, it features, you know, uh, John Densmore on drums and Warren Haynes, yeah. uh, Ivan and Cyril Neville and a bunch of amazing musicians so he had watched it and he just really loved how fresh the videos were coming out and now we shoot everything with high definition and you know it just sort of had been an evolution and he had seen the whole process from the beginning robbie robertson was also a big supporter in the beginning of playing for change so after you know the, he saw the video he said hey this would be a great idea to do for the 50th anniversary of the wait with my dad mm -hmm. and so we took the idea to robbie and he loved it and we were off to the races from there. Uh, work with Robbie, record and film the song, and then travel around the world. I think this one was at least 10, 15 different countries. Wow. And just put them all together on the song, layer by layer, with a mobile studio and cameras, and create songs around the world. So you, yeah, and there's definitely high def. You went to all of these different places and filmed all of these different musicians. It's really just a, an incredible thing. How did you, uh, you know, so Robbie was in on it uh, from the beginning, thought it was a great idea. What's, what's that process of, like, getting Ringo to sign up on board, Marcus King, so many other great musicians? Yeah, I mean, so the first thing is that it's a perfect song for what we do because it's very cinematic. Yeah. The verses of the song and there's a lot of great verses each one is very iconic so for us it was a chance okay we want to introduce new characters each verse yeah. take people around the world and constantly have different instruments playing together that maybe people don't ordinarily see so that was so we kind of just sketch an idea but the greatest thing about making these songs is that you never know <laughs> what you're going to get wh where it's going to be and, you know, the idea is, well, with a great song and with a, a great attitude right. and with great equipment, you can go out there and, uh, and add these amazing musicians. So it really, it started with going into the studio. We actually went to Shangri-La Studios, where the band had done some of their albums and, and Bob Dylan and this amazing studio. And we brought in a band and we recorded the track. Wow. And what was funny was we had one of our great Playing for Change musicians, Merman's Mosengo. He was in town. Uh, he's from the Congo. 
he was in Los Angeles. He's one of the great singers in a bunch of our videos. And he came in to play some instruments, some guitar, some percussion. He's an amazing singer, but you know, English is probably his fifth language. So that song is very detailed English too. You yes, know, it's a very yes. specific poetry. Right. And so he says, oh, you know, I'm just going to learn one verse for this demo that we were creating so that we could have a track for Robbie Robertson to play on. And he sings it, and it was just jaw-dropping. I remember in the studio, everybody stopped. and like, wow, it's so amazing to hear somebody from Congo singing that song. He has so much soul and talent. So anyway, when, when Robbie heard that, you know, I think that he was immediately drawn to how this was going to be different yeah. than a normal cover of the band. Right. This was going to be all these different cultural interpretations coming together into one song. Right. And so he was really excited about that. And then we ended up going to Africa and filming Mermans he sings the second verse uh which was incredible and these are things that start to take it off of a traditional path and then you have this creative freedom to kind of explore what would a world version be of this song yeah it's... and so we start thinking about the solos and okay let's add a oud master in the middle east and then let's make sure we get a sitar master in Kathmandu, and cut them together with robbie and so all of this sort of energy and ideas, these are the things that we started to go out and make happen. So first with Robbie and then adding some other musicians, then we were able to get the track to Ringo Starr. You, so okay. you, you got it to Ringo, and then the, the song turns into the key of F Demented. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was just incredible. I, I loved love it. that. And you know, the, that's the funnest thing about this is the joy that comes out of all these different musicians being a part of a song around the world and a song that great with such great talent. Right. You know, everybody just really believed in it. And I think at this time, we're such a divided world. It's so important to focus on the connections. And there's no better connection around the world than music. Right. Yeah. So, and and Marcus King is in this and uh, other folks. Tell, tell us a little bit more yeah, about... Yeah, Lucas Nelson. Um, so we really wanted to incorporate every... I mean, when you think about it, Marcus King is, is in his early 20s. Right. And Ringo is late 70s, early 80s. Right. So... It just shows the music transcends time. It, it, there's nothing more timeless than a song, right. you know, and there's nothing that can travel further distances than a song. Right. So what's amazing here is being able, you know, we wanted to include the next generation, people that are keeping sort of authentic roots music with messages alive. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, one example of that is Lucas Nelson, one of my favorite musicians, uh, Willie Nelson's son. And. He's incredible, and he sang the Crazy Chester verse, the fourth one. Um, and then we were trying to s come up with some sort of new version of a Aretha Franklin and Mavis Staples sort of contribution to yeah, the song. Yeah. So two of my favorite singers are Sharita and Rosalind. They are from uh, Jamaica, from Kingston, Jamaica. They sing in Damien Marley's band. Right. But they've, all, they've been in a number of our videos, Give Me Shelter Around the World, Get Up, Stand Up. And they're two of my favorite singers. So we went to Trenchtown, Jamaica, put headphones on them actually in front of Bob Marley's old house. Wow. And they sang the verses, or the last verse, which really just opened up this other amazing energy to it. Yeah. So we had everything done except the first verse. And it's such an iconic thing. And you go from Ringo Starr to Robbie Robertson to who? Oh, you know? Right, right. I decided, wow, you know, um, somebody had sent me uh, Marcus King. Actually, the amazing thing about this is one of our partners to make this video was the Sheikh of uh, Sheikh Abdullah Al Khalifa in Bahrain. Wow. Because he had approached us many years ago about how could we use music to end the stereotype of terrorism mm. by incorporating Arabic musicians in the videos and showing that they're just like everybody else. So we went and that's how we found the Oud masters who played the solo. And when uh, he has different musicians coming through the area if they're touring in the region and Marcus King had come through there. And so he had called me and said, wow, you got to hear this great singer named Marcus King. So it was amazing. A, 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 a musical fan and a sheikh in, in the Middle East called me to tell me about Marcus King <laughs> and then connected me with Marcus King. Holy cow. And I, yeah. And then Marcus, uh, you know, loved, obviously, I mean, once he saw Robbie and Ringo right, in the yeah, song, yeah, he was in. Yeah. And it was a really cool thing. You know, he played, we, we wanted to add a little bit of that Dwayne Allman slide yes. thing. Yes. and. A kind of an, a, a, a nod to Levon Helm, have a great singer from the mm -hmm. South. Yes. So it just sort of hit a bunch of the boxes for us, and, and he's such a soulful, incredible person. Right. 
Yeah, he really yep. nailed he really nailed it. So, uh, and he got the first verse and the slide guitar. That was really really fantastic. So, uh, and of course, Robbie got the solo as he should, right? Yeah, right. And shared it with another. You know, it turns out later he told me that the oud is his favorite instrument. Is that right? So that was amazing because it was perfect to have him be able to cut. You know, from it goes from the oud to the sitar right. to Robbie, uh, and everybody just plays so seamlessly. It's just, it's an amazing thing how all these different cultures can interpret something and then create something like you've never heard before. Right. It's incredible. Let's talk a little bit about, Mark, how did playing for change, uh, com and .org even get started? What's your origin story here? Right. So the origin, I mean, the original spark for the project was many years ago. I was a recording engineer in New York City. Okay. And some days I would wake up and go to work at the Hit Factory. And some days I would go up and, and work with Biggie Smalls. And then the next day would be a 70-piece orchestra for Broadway. And then the next day would be Paul Simon. And I would watch how much joy each of them had making their music. And then when I would watch them go home, totally different worlds. And I started realizing, like, wow, if they could see what I see, get to see in each other, they would probably all be best friends, you know. Mm. So I saw this bond music has, especially when you're recording it, because it's people's happiest moment. Yeah. And then I was on my way to work one day, and there were two monks in a subway, and they were painted all in white with robes on. One of them was playing a nylon guitar, the other singing. I don't know the language. I imagine most people didn't. But this day, I come down, and it's packed, and nobody gets on the train. And everybody's watching this music. And I just looked around, and I saw a homeless man next to somebody going to Wall Street, the little girl next to an elderly woman. And just during this performance, they're so connected. And then the song ends, everybody gets on the train, they go their separate way. And it just occurred to me two things. One, when the music played, the things that divided us, they disappeared. The things that made us different, they disappeared. And then the best music that I heard in my life was on the way to the studio and not in the studio. <laughs> so I realized I could spend my life in the studio. I'm never going to be able to record whatever that just was. Right. So then I decided, okay, what if we bring the studio to the people? Mm -hmm. So I designed, uh, designed a recording studio, the same exact equipment I would use with Paul Simon inside. And we powered it first with golf cart batteries and then car batteries and now little battery packs. And that way we could bring really, really high quality studio to the people. And then we, where they are, you know, in natural environments. So we're talking because like a, that's, a mobile recording studio like the Stones yeah. used to have? Well, but very small, like I'm backpacked. So I could go in the middle of a, or could go to a mountaintop and record yeah. and have the same equipment we would use with Paul Simon in a studio. Holy cow. And then we added cameras, you know, so we could record and film yeah. it. And now you're really starting to be able to express, you know, show people a window into the world yeah. through the lens of music. Yes. And I think that was really a big part of our idea was, wow, when the music plays, everybody gets along. So let's go travel the world and use it as a unifier. And let's create these songs around the world where each of these musicians we record get to play together on a song. Right. You know, so we'll record uh, a guitar player on the street in Santa Monica, California, and then we'll go to South Africa and we'll put headphones on a Zulu choir mm -hmm. in a township and they'll sing over it. Wow. And then we'll go to the Congo and we'll add the bass <laughs> and so That's on amazing. around the world. And, yeah. and we've now got, yeah, there's well over 50 different songs around the world wow. uh, since we started. And then the reason that this, you know, so as we're traveling, people invite me in their homes, feeding us, play us their music. We realize none of this means anything if we don't give back. Right. So that's when we created the Playing for Change Foundation to build music and art schools around the world and to connect all the kids together, like the videos. So we now have 15 music schools and, you know, kids in America get to meet kids in Mali and West Africa through the music, work on projects, and then they get to reinvent how they see the world. So instead of West Africa being the home of Ebola virus, it's the home of the blues. Right. And kids get to see that the way that we get to see that. So that's really what they work together. You know, the songs around the world and the schools are all kind of in the same mission of let's connect and inspire the world through music. Yeah, that's amazing. A great, incredible story, Mark. And, and the origin of you getting inspired. You were already <laughs> living music at the time, making a living with it. Uh, but that inspiration of those musicians you saw on the street took it to a whole new level for you. It's incredible. Yeah, and it, re it redefined for me what is success because suddenly you have like a guy who sounds like Otis Redding singing on the street. And I said to him, you know, why are you out here on the street? Right. He said, man, 
I'm in the joy business. Huh. I come out to bring joy to the people. And I'm saying this guy brought so much joy to so many people right. that to me, that was the ultimate success. You know, yeah. there was no filter between him and the audience. Yeah. And, you know, so that made me sort of say, hey, look, there's so much talent in the world. It's just not be about being rich and famous. Right. What about exposing the world to the infinite talent we have? Right. And And music really is whatever continent, whatever country, religion, politics, whatever it is, that common unifier, right? Exactly. In in the beginning, we were recording and filming in Israel and in Palestine. Wow. And I remember when we went to Palestine, the musician said, oh, if the Israelis are in this video, we better be on it too. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't, oh, if they're on it, we don't want to be involved. It's if you're going to represent their musical yeah. culture, you better represent right. our musical right. culture. So I realized that it sort of transcends the things that divide us. Like it actually takes you to a higher place because you, you can feel music. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't preach to you. There's nobody pointing a finger at you. You can just feel it and you can feel how it can be used to bring us all together. Yeah. So you're saying on, uh, and, and folks can find this on playingforchange.com and .org and on your YouTube channel. Uh, you have 50 of these videos like The Weight uh, these worldwide yeah. videos. That's incredible, Mark. Incredible. Right. We did, uh, we did an amazing version of Words of Wonder, Get Up, Stand Up with Keith Richards around the world, where it was Keith Richards and Aztec Indians and mariachis and like, it's just really amazing stuff. And you yeah. can you just start to get a feeling of, wow, how well we all actually get together. But the other thing that's so amazing in this is you get to learn that the things that make us different, they make us stronger. Like all the different cultures and ways of seeing the world come together and make a piece of art. It actually is stronger than an individual perspective. So these videos, these musicians, they often listen more and they play less, mm. which is sort of a phenomenon yes. for anyone who's in the studio. <laughs> Usually people listen less and play more. And uh, this is amazing because they know they're just a part of it. Like they're just going to be in there for a little bit. Right. So they want to find how they contribute to the whole piece. Sure. And I think that that sort of music without an ego is an interesting thing. It's it's really the best way to make a unifying music. Right. Like I don't mind music with ego for rock and roll or whatever. Right. But in this context, it's great to take that out. Yes. And then you just get people really kind of listening and, and creating something bigger together. You bet. Yeah, a whole, a whole different purpose. And, you know, can we talk a little bit about your story too, Mark? It sounds like you're in a very unique position to do all of this. You, you, how did you get into the music business and start with engineering and producing? Well, I started at the University of New Hampshire, right. where I was a uh, I was a uh, interpersonal communication major. Interesting. And I remember my mom saying at the time, "Well, there's no job for that," <laughs> you know. And, and then you know, and, and, and but what I loved about it was that it teaches you how to learn how other people make sense of the world. Where do they find their identity? Where do they find their meaning? You know, it's not just about where you find yours; it's where do they find theirs. Yes. And so that practice of learning that really opened my mind to really wanting to be able to travel and see how people make sense of the world. Mm -hmm. And I needed a job. So I, there was an article, or, you know, an ad for live sound engineer, no experience necessary. And I was the only one that went to the interview. Is that right? You got the <laughs> so gig got then, the right? <laughs> and I spent a couple of years just mixing every kind of band and concert at the school and all the bar bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I ended up uh, applying for a job at the Hit Factory, which was one of the, I think it was the biggest recording studio at the, in the world at the time. And I just got a job there, you know, to start to get food for rappers and to like, you know, just kind of watch and learn. And in this process, there were so many different kinds of musicians coming in at the same, in, in every, every kind of music was being made in that studio every day. So you just had this vast you know, diversity of music that I would get to work on mm. until eventually I got to record it myself and be an engineer. And all of these things just opened me up to really open to the, to the depth of music. Like right. it, it's, it's invented by people for the purposes that we need. So right. if we need to inspire each other, it's the best way to do it. If we need to find tools for forgiveness or celebrate or whatever the things are, right. it's, it comes out of music. And I was starting to get exposed to that. And that kind of opened my mind to wanting to take it a little bit deeper 
than just recording in the studio. Uh, I wanted to try to explore these different cultures and, and unite them together through songs. It's amazing. And, and so obviously once you got to the recording studio and saw how all that worked, you sort of got the bug of like, you want to do this. Uh, before you got, before you created the playing for change, who who would be some of the folks that we would know that you would have recorded, or some of their songs or albums came out? Yeah, so the three biggest artists for me after Paul Simon. I mean, Paul Simon was yeah. huge because yeah. to see that kind of world talent sure. play together, yes, it's definitely eye opening. But then I moved to California to record music for Jackson Brown, oh. also one of my heroes. Yeah, definitely. And he's been a big influence in the project. In fact, everywhere he would travel to around the world and come home and tell me, and then I would go. <laughs> so a lot of the places I went were kind of following Jackson. He would say, oh, me and Bonnie Raitt were just over in Mali. And there's this incredible blues musicians there. And then I would get the crew together and we would go to Mali. And actually, we built an amazing music school there in this ancient village called Karina, which is sort of a, the home of the blues, in a sense, an mm-hmm. amazing place. And then also, I worked a lot with Keb Mo, oh. who is another one of my heroes amazing. and uh, one of my, another one of my, my great friends. And, you know, just watching him and the, the joy that he brings out of people to get the best out of them yeah. was a great lesson in making music. And I remember him saying to me, you know, music and sound, it's a feeling first. So if it feels good, it's going to sound good. And so that was really important to me because you could listen to Robert Johnson records or you could listen to Steely Dan and they both sound great because they feel great and they sound so different, but they both feel perfect the way they are. So for me, it was like, okay, so if I can go around the world and make everybody feel good, have a good intention, have a good project, have nice microphones and equipment and a good vibe, then they're going to put all that into the music and then it's going to sound better and it's going to feel better. (laughs) So I really took a lot of that to heart. Yeah. And then another group that I love that were very inspirational to me was Los Lobos. Great band. And I spent a lo- I spent a lot of time with those guys, and they exposed me to a lot of music. And uh, you know they've been in a bunch of the videos as well as his Keb Mo and Jackson Brown. He produced a version of Guantanamera we did around the world with seventy five Cubans around the world all playing it together. Wow. Uh, so each of those guys really has taught me so much about music and life, and then also. I've been fortunate to have them get involved with playing for change. Right. It's amazing. It's amazing. So let's talk about, because I want to, it's not just you in a backpack that's heading to Bali or Mali <laughs> or wherever, right? I mean, let's give give your crew some love and, you know, we, we don't have to do a, a total deep dive, but let's geek out a little bit if I could ask you of like, what is some of the gear you're actually using? Sure. So the, the way that playing for change first started was with my co-founder, Whitney Kronke. And she's an amazing woman. She uh, and I met out in Los Angeles when I moved out here to record for Jackson Brown. And she knew I I had sort of had this idea of of wanting to take the studio to the streets. And so together we made a film called Cinematic Discovery of Street Musicians, where we first started traveling across America and bringing the studio and making us songs across America. So the guitar solo was like Venice Beach to Harlem in front of a fish market. You know, and we just started to explore this idea. It was original things we would write. And it was just sort of, wow, this works so incredibly well, having all these different people play on the same song. And also the incredible stories, you know, finding these stories and learning the depth of what goes on from the music, like the social change, the life change that happens every day on the streets because Mm -hmm. of the music. So that was exciting. And that kind of gave us the idea that this is much bigger than one film. Why don't we take this idea and turn it into a project we could take around the world. She also runs our Playing for Change Foundation. So the two of us have been together now. I think this is going to be our 20th year coming up since we started Playing for Change. And uh, we also have, you know, uh, our, our, my producing partner is Rand, Rand Williams, who has also been with us from the beginning. And uh, my brother, Greg Johnson, also does a lot of the producing. Cool. And really, the musical band leader of the project is Mermans Mosengo. He comes from the Congo and is uh, just one of the most inspiring, most talented people that I've ever met. Uh, So that's a a bunch of the crew there. And then, you know, we travel around with different camera operators and different people who support it. So and you're you're literally like traveling up a mountain in the Andes or something and you got this gear on your back and you you record it. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. So what we do is we we had to minimize the weight. 
yeah. of the equipment. You know, in the beginning, it was so heavy yeah. with golf cart batteries. And, mm, <laughs> but yeah. one thing, you know, the, the thing about the golf, one time I came home and I hadn't paid my electric bill from one of these trips because I was just gone for a while. And the electric bill, so the electricity was off. And I was able to just turn on the golf, my whole house with the golf cart battery. <laughs> That's a powerful <laughs> so it battery. So blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, we had to get out of that system. So then we went to car batteries. And they were uh, also tricky because sometimes you could go to a far off place, buy one and find out it wasn't charged. Mm. So that we had to take it to the next level. We, we developed it and got these lithium battery packs and the same microphones we've always used, uh, which are Shep's mics and uh, Grace mic pre's, which are um, they have a built in word clock and a great converter and great mic pre. So that sort of became the sound was those two things together. Very small and you can carry them anywhere. The things that get heavy are the microphone stands yeah. and, you know, the tripods for the cameras yeah. and all the cables. Right. <laughs> but anyway, that's why there's like four of us, sometimes three, sometimes five. Okay. And we travel the world, divide the, the, the equipment up into bags yeah. and then and with wheels on them. Sure. And yeah, it's really light and efficient. And it's great because you get to go to where the music is rather than have the music come to yes. you. Yeah. You get to go to where the music is. And then that opens up so many doors and you get to really feel the culture and learn about the culture. Right. And then you have a really better opportunity to add them to a song yeah. because you've learned more about them and you understand how they could best contribute to have the most success in a song around the world. Yeah, and I, I imagine as the technology improves and gets better, uh, hopefully it'll keep getting lighter and lighter for you. Uh, that you know you can upgrade all yeah. of these things. Yeah, 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 and it's great now. Technology has caught up to this concept, right? And now, uh, yeah, now we can you know just record with ease all over the world. Right, exactly. What What are some of the biggest challenges around doing all of this for you, Mark? Whether it's traveling, whether it's the gear, or you know getting into different countries that might be having some issues uh, what are some of the challenges for you right well i mean uh a lot of times it's just a matter of getting you know it's how long does it take to get people to understand the heart of what we're doing and then it, these challenges just become opportunities yeah. but in the beginning there, there's all kinds of challenges when you're traveling to far off countries i mean there's a lot of times where there's four or five different languages right. just to get to the translation <laughs> You know, right. between all the people. Right. So, you know, there, but, but then when the music plays, obviously the thing, the, the language barriers disappear. But there's how do we all communicate? And so one quick example of a of, of challenge that turned into an opportunity was um, I had had my brother had given me a book called A Day in the Life of Africa. Hmm. And in this book, there's 100 pictures taken on the same day. And he had one of them framed for me. And it's this picture of these musicians in a ghetto in Gugaletu Township, South Africa, one of the poorer places in the world or most dangerous as well. And these guys had so much soul in this picture. And I was like, well, we got to go find these guys. And I check online and I try to find it. And the leader of the band, his name is Pokey, and he's the bass player. So we go down to South Africa and we're recording all these different musicians and asking anyone, does anyone know Pokey? Does anyone know Pokey? And you know, nobody knows them. Until one day we're recording Joe and the Ganja Muffins in Cape Town, South Africa. Joe plays a kazoo yeah. and sings. Love it. And of course, his best friend is Pokey. Pokey. So he can't believe we're looking for Pokey. So he right. takes us in a van and we drive out to this township through all these shacks. And I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, it went from so beautiful to really, really sad. And then we pull up to Pokey's little home and we get out of the van. And, you know, I've had this guy's picture on my wall for years. Yeah. So I'm in love with him, but he has no idea who I am. Right. So he sees me come out and I, 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 I go up to like give him a hug and it's all confused. Like, who are you? And sure. So I time i had an ipod video so i hand of stand by me where it was at that time and we were there to add him to play the upright bass mm, nice. so i hand him the ipad video ipod video and i go in the backyard and it was at that time in these townships there's a high rate of hiv yeah. and a lot of a lot of poverty mm. so it was very sad and it was a lot of kids very sick and parents sick mm. and no didn't seem like the right place to do what we were going to do. And I said to myself, maybe we came too far. Mm -hmm. you know, this is too much. Mm -hmm. This is not, maybe music can't even help this. And then I go back inside with Pokey and I say to Pokey, maybe we should go. And he's like, no way. All my friends are coming over. Wow. They start to set up their instruments. They start to play. 
And it was almost like this exorcism thing where all the people come out of these little huts and shacks mm. and they start singing and dancing and screaming and crying. And I look around and it, beca- and it occurred to me, it went from the saddest place I have ever seen to the happiest place I've ever seen. Wow. And the only difference was they played music. And that's when I realized we did not go too far. This is exactly where we're supposed to be to learn these lessons. There is no issue we can't make better when we use music as a tool to connect people, inspire people. And I think that that, and that is actually the home of our very first music school. Because then, of course, we'd say, Pokey, what can we do to help you, you know? And he'd say, maybe you guys help build a music school. So maybe some kid here, instead of being a gangster, is the next Nelson Mandela. And maybe the only difference is somebody believed in him. So our foundation was really born that day, in my opinion. Like that was the, the time to say, okay, we're going to support this community. And now we can go on and do this all over the world. Give kids an opportunity. They don't have to be musicians. They could just be better people right. because people believe in them, give them opportunities, support, listen to them and tools, you know, to go out and, and, and live an inspired life. That's such a freaking powerful story, Mark, right there. The power of music, right? And how healing, uh, it can't maybe not heal anything, but it can really lift our spirits. And say it again, please, how many music schools that you guys have and, and are working right now, on? There are, yeah, right now there's 15 music schools, wow. and all our schools are free. They're all run by the communities. So they determine, you know, what are the instruments, the salaries, the teachers. And then that way it has its own identity. And then we now connect all those kids together. So it can be a school we build from scratch. I mean, in Mali, in Karina, Mali, they built it brick by brick, swimming in a river, get bucket and a net to get the sand and make a brick. Then they built the school. Other places in Kathmandu, we could go to an orphanage. They already have a place. And then we just become their music and art program. So it evolves based on the needs of the place. But it really is important for people who are listening to know it's all run by the people. And then what we do is support that. Where else in the world are they located as well? And where would you like some of them to be located? Right. Right now we have schools in South Africa, in Mali, Ghana, Rwanda, Morocco, Bangladesh, Thailand, Nepal, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico. Um, We're working on a new program opportunity in northern Uganda, in the largest refugee camp in the world, as well as in Kinshasa, Congo. Um, and then also working on ideas to bring the project back home to America and partner with a bunch of different schools here across the country. Fantastic. That's yeah, great. Uh, you know, you're, you're making change, incredible change in the world. It's playing for change. And people can donate and help these schools as well on your website, playingforchange.com and .org. Is that right? Yes. And really, the coolest thing people can do is become a member on playingforchange.com because that way they get all this insight. They get to meet the kids, play the instruments that you're helping them buy. That really is the ultimate thing. You know, giving is getting. So if you can see the kid play a guitar, you help and support. It really brings it home. And it's a powerful thing. So we also that's also how we are able to make the music around the world. And uh, and to continue to to take this project to everyone. It's amazing. It's amazing. Say, can you say a little bit about what some of your next projects might be or coming up, or what what would your dream? You know, these uh, the songs that you're doing, the the song around the world series. Do you have uh, uh, some dream songs, some like fantasy of like if I could get? I mean, it's you got Ringo and Robbie Robertson. That's pretty cool. So, but any other musicians who you'd like? I really would love to get them and make this song. Yeah, I'm really working right now to work with Cat Stevens, Yusuf Islam, to do Peace Train okay. around the world. Perfect. And, uh, and and he's really excited about it, and I actually started it a little bit awesome. with these incredible drum, drum group in Salvador, Bahia, Brazil, called uh, Oladum, and they were the drummers on Paul Simon's Rhythm of the Saints. Yeah. So I went down there and added them to the track already just to, <laughs> just to get started. That's great. And, uh, and so I think that that's going to be a great one we work on sort of as a follow-up to the wait for next summer. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so people don't, you can't just do this in a weekend. Say a little bit about your process <laughs> of like, uh, how long does, you know, how long did it take you for to record and edit and all everything with the wait? The wait was almost two years. Uh, from the beginning to the end, maybe it was like a year and a half of production 
because uh, we're also working on other songs. And then where we where we go to a place, we have to figure out what song is best for those people. So, you know, I have a couple of different song options everywhere we go. Okay. Uh, so the songs could take a little longer, but then we also get more other songs done at the same time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're getting quicker at it, but it really is a brick by brick sign kind of art form. Of course. You have to go there and then you have to scout and, you know, we hire a local guide in every country and then they find us all the local musicians yeah. And then we sit down and learn what are their instruments and how are we going to apply them right. to the different songs. And I imagine uh, that your interpersonal communication degree actually comes in quite handy with all of this of how to communicate with folks, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could have had a better uh, major in college, you know. So, I mean, I think it just let everybody know, you know, if you just follow your own heart, right. you know, then great things come out of it. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. And and when can we maybe expect the your your next video? Because I know you guys are working hard and it's not like you're just doing this through Skype like we are right now is you're getting on a plane and traveling to Africa or wherever. So. Right. Well, one, you know, obviously for our project, there's all kinds of it's all kinds of music. But one of our sort of um, centerpieces and one of my heroes musically is Bob Marley. So we've done a lot of different Bob Marley songs, but we were and we work a lot with this great musician named Manu Chow, and he's based out of Barcelona. And he had approached us about doing the song Soul Rebel around the world. And what was amazing is we reached out to Bunny Whaler from the Whalers. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it was Bunny and Peter Tosh and Bob Marley that started the Whalers. And my favorite album ever is Catch a Fire, which is the three of them. And we were able to record and film Bunny singing like an angel on Soul <laughs> Rebel around the world. He's in his 70s, and I know that he's gotten ill since then, so I send him all of our love. But it's amazing to have him on the song. Sure. Uh, so that's the one that we'll be releasing soon. It's almost finished. Nice. That's Soul Rebel around the world. We also just did a song from the Congo to Congo Square where we added Preservation Hall, and a lot of the idea here is reunite the slave trade, the people that were divided, and reunite them back through songs. So we have a bunch of really cool stuff going on, um, you know, with all different sort of uh, blues and uh, salsa and Afro-Cuban songs. And then we have more, you know, well-known songs as well. We had finished, uh, just finishing up Soul Shine around the world with Warren Haynes with an amazing choir in South Africa singing on it in their native language. And, you know, so we have all kinds of stuff to share with you guys. Yeah, it's amazing. It's great stuff. Uh, Mark, what haven't we covered today? What what uh, haven't I asked you or that you want to say that's important to let folks know about with Playing for Change? Right. So there's this amazing bridge between these videos that you can watch online and the schools, which is the Playing for Change band. And the Playing for Change Band is a group of some of the best musicians we met throughout our travels while we would make the songs around the world. The the videos, the musicians, they only see each other in the video, so they don't actually meet each other. So we thought it would be amazing to bring a bunch of these musicians who'd never met from all these different countries. So 10 musicians from 10 countries come together to help play a concert to build our first school 10 years ago. And we called it the Playing for Change Band. Mm -hmm. And now... This band has toured the world. They are really the ambassadors for the project, go to children's hospitals, homeless shelters, Mm -hmm. remind people music is so much more than just entertainment. But it's also the tangible example of this project right in front of you. You see all these different countries and cultures get together so quickly and so powerfully, and you just realize that's what the world is meant to be. So the Playing for Change band is an exciting thing for people to check out. We're going to tour a lot next year. And, uh, you know, they've done world tours with Robert Plant. And, you know, half the band had never heard of Led Zeppelin. Right. (laughs) And it's just, you know, so it's just an amazing group of musicians that I think everyone who's listening today would love them. And that's called the Playing for Change band. Playing for Change band. This is really incredible stuff you're doing, Mark. You're doing great work in the world. I'm, I'm so psyched to have connected with you and meet you. Folks, if you're watching this uh, or you're listening to this on the audio podcast version, go to playingforchange.com, playingforchange.org. Support this uh, great organization, music schools, and and, uh, thank you so much for bringing this to us, Mark. Nice job. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, this is listen, this is for everybody. This is and it only works because of all of us. So, you know, that's why I want to invite everybody to come join your music project, Playing for Change. Absolutely. 
Fantastic. Mark Johnson, thank you so much for being on the record today. Thank you, my, my pleasure. Take a load off, Take a load off, Take a load off for free.